But as I say, more revelations from Prince Harry today, as I'm sure you're well aware. Copies of his new book, Spare, were accidentally put on sale in Spain. Um, <laughs> the newspapers have picked out some of the most shocking points, which include Harry's allegations that family members confronted him after Prince Philip's funeral looking for a fight. Uh, also, a fallout between Meghan and Kate. Other salacious revelations, including talking about losing his virginity to an older woman. Sorry. <laughs> Well, given that confession, let me continue. The older woman apparently <laughs> liked horses quite a lot. And Prince Harry has <coughs> treated me not unlike a young stallion. He continues, quick ride. <laughs> quick ride, after which she smacked my rump and sent me to Grace. Oh, Denise. Wow. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Um, Sounds like you, Denzi. Um, he talks about taking cocaine. Mm. He also talks about his time in Afghanistan, where he says he killed 25 members of the Taliban. Mm. Uh, he also talks about his sadness and not being hugged by his father following the news of his mum, Princess Diana's death. Wow. Now, before the book's official release, though we kind of know what's in it now, um, Harry will be sitting down in an interview with Tom Bradby on ITV1 and ITVX. That's this Sunday night. Um, and a new trailer for that has just been released. You know, I talk about the red mist that I had for so many years, and I saw this red mist in him. He wanted me to, to, to hit him back, but I chose not to. There's I want reconciliation, but first there needs to be some accountability. The truth, supposedly, at the moment, has been there's only one side to this story, right? But there's two sides to every story. Well, so interesting, isn't it, that Prince Harry says there very plainly that he wants reconciliation. Um, I mean, Judy, do you think this is the path to reconciliation? I think, you know, if I'm honest, I, I just... My main focus and, and feeling and emotion to this is just concern. Like, I, I've kind of got to a stage where I don't ever want to engage in the, the theatrical side of this family and his family and them being a part. I'm just really worried and concerned about... Prince Harry, because it seems like there's so much that he wants to get off his chest. Um, I'm worried that at this moment he's so emotional that the same platforms um, that are allowing him to tell his stories will be the same platforms that will pull him down, because it, it was going to be talked choice. about how much he's talking about This it. is his choice. You know, he is the one who but is But do you make talking. the right choice when you are making decisions from heavy emotions, from things that hasn't been healed, healed with from your past so or So do you think it's a, a mistake for him to have, you I know, think, been so open about how I he feels? I think it's a mistake for anyone to judge the situation just purely on the information that's put out there, whether that's by media, whether that's by the royal family not speaking, whether that's just by his story. I think that the focus should more be about why is someone needing to speak so much? And we know, you know, that's usually from feeling like you're not being heard. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my concern for Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, are, are you still up for more revelations? Because this isn't the end. And funny, I said to the audience here before it started, how are you feeling about it? And there was a sort of genuine feeling of, oh, can I had enough now? For whatever reasons, I'm sure a host of different reasons. How are you feeling? Um, I think I'm just kind of a bit fed up of the debate of it all. Like, I don't... I hate this thing where we're kind of forced to pick sides. And I think... You know, at the end of the day, they've both chosen different routes. They've both reacted to... I agree with um, Judy. He's obviously... I mean, we don't know. But he's obviously struggling in some way. We've seen all the stuff he's been through in the past when he was younger. You know, saying things like, oh, he wish he was hugged after the death of his mum and knowing that Meghan wasn't able to get... Well, they're saying, wasn't able to get the help she needed when her mental health was in trouble. He obviously hasn't had that support. He obviously hasn't mm. had an outlet in that way. So for me, I'm like, this is his way of doing it, but I just hate that we're forced to go, oh, I'm team Kate and Will and I'm team Harry and Meghan and I just don't think it's that simple, you know? Mm. Just, <laughs> <but that's the> <laughs> Because, of course, the conversation now turns round and the focus goes on to the royal family mm -hmm. as, OK, then, are you going to say anything? Are you going to mm -hmm. say anything? They're not going to say anything. I think we can be guaranteed of that. It would but be nice if they not... did. Hmm? It would be nice if they did, though. Well, <laughs> well would it? I, I don't think it would. I, I, I mean, mean, I genuinely... I feel like that's the gossip think... side of me. Yeah, that's yeah. The... Mm. Oh, I, mean, I don't gosh. think they'd say anything of any substance either. And, and I don't think they should, because I think they're only gonna, they would only pour oil on this particular bonfire. I, I don't think it would yeah. do him any good. I don't think it yeah. would 
yeah, do yeah. any of us any good for them. Funny enough, we did do a poll on this saying, you know, should Prince William and King Charles break their silence? 64% um, said no. So they shouldn't break their silence, mm. they should keep shtum. Um, what do you feel? I mean, Denise, you've been very well, you know, I've got nothing this. to say about Harry and Meghan. Nothing <laughs> at all. <clears throat> um, I think, you know, listen, th th there's part of me that, that I, I have been very vocal. From many, many moons ago, you know, before all the, the, the Oprah interviews and everything, I, I, I've always had, had their... I've always had a lot of support for the for the two of them, and I felt that the way that they've been treated. I think that Harry is talking as the eleven year old boy who lost his mum. I don't think he's ever forgiven the institution for the way they treated her. I don't think he's ever totally believed what happened in the Paris Tunnel. I think he has lots of questions that have never been answered, and I think he's been told to push them all down. And we know, as two people who suffer from clinical depression, mm -hmm. you push everything down, it's going to explode in in some way. And I feel that. He mm. wants to right some wrongs, and this is what yeah. he's done. But I also feel, at the same time, the fact that there will be 64 or 65 articles in something like the Mail Online today, the government's doing what they're doing and getting away with bloody murder, excuse me, swearing, while we're talking about Harry and Meghan in every day when we should be talking about things like the illegal VIP line, the PPE, all the mistakes that happened during COVID that we're having to pay for with our tax money. With our tax money is paying for all of their disasters. Well, well I mean, I agree with you to, to a large extent, but, I mean, I suppose you could also <clears throat> say that, to a certain extent, this is, consciously or otherwise, Prince Harry exerting his privilege because the whole world is hanging on his every word when, as we know, there are so many people in this country who are struggling to feed their families and a whole host of other real difficulties that our people are facing. But because he is the son of the royal house, we're mm. all talking about him. And I have to say, whilst I totally take all your mm. points, that if, if this is a damaged guy, I have great sympathy for him, he should get help. Mm. But I think he also has to recognise to a certain extent that despite the difficulties he's faced, he also has enjoyed great privilege in his life. Yes. Great material I, privilege. But material but privilege feel... doesn't... No, I'm not saying it's a one or a but. We all have... We all dealt a different hand in life. Few of us have the perfect life. I feel like he's it. not had a perfect but life. But also, yes, he's damaged, had... though, as well. It, it just because you are speaking out about something that you feel is a massive injustice mm. in your life doesn't mean you're damaged. You know, I would just he... like to hear him appreciate that he has had. But he has said, said that. In his life. He, has, he, has said he has said regards to his privilege. He has said mm. that his outlook on things as a white male in, in Western society, in as a world, was different beforehand. And now his experience... But he still wants to be yeah, a member of a family yeah, but that he's, is based but on he's talking birthright from the experience. and class. He's not talking family. about experience in regards to his wealth or class. He's talking about experience in regards to racism that he's seen because of his wife. But what and I would say before that, is... he was blinking to it because he hadn't been exposed to it. If he so is really concerned sense, about equality, you walk away from the monarchy. But because the monarchy to, he, is... He walked away from it. Family. No, he said he still wants to be part of the monarchy. With his with his, he didn't he say he wants to be dad. part of the monarchy. He, says, he said he believes in the monarchy no. and I would like to reconcile with my family. He didn't say to be part of the monarchy, I which think is he, Well, even if you believe in the monarchy, if you believe in monarchy, you don't believe in equality. They don't match. No, I, well, I... They, they don't match. I, yeah. They don't. <clears throat> and know? this is a thing. Because this is a conversation that will continuously you are born happen... born into a family. ..and continuously go on, when what he's saying is, I think he has stepped up to play and saying, look, he understands that he's had a lifestyle of privilege. However, in that before, he never saw the things that he is now seeing mm. that is protecting and threatening yeah. his wife yeah. and his exactly. children. He's doing what they he can do for now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would never contradict you on this, Judy, because you obviously have lived experience, yeah. but I, I must say I think he's a strange race campaigner. I have to say. You think he's a strange own. race campaigner? Why is Why? That? Based on his history. I do. Well, this is... But, but he might but be a white person lessons. that's learned and now he's trying to say, actually, I, my eyes have opened to what I've been involved in or to what other black people or people from different cultures, different ethnicity has experienced. In and which as case, you should walk away from the world, he has is been now trying to open everybody else's eyes. I think you're very generous with him. But anyway... Um...